Hello, my name is Sascha Preibisch. I'm a lead software developer here at Layer 7 Tech. Today I will show you how the Secure Span Gateway can be used to consume OAuth protected APIs. We will look at an implementation of a social login feature. Social login. You probably have seen websites that require you to create an account. And if you created an account, you have to sign in to access the website's content. On some websites, you can find a login screen like the one shown here. This one allows you to either register or to reuse your credentials that you have already created on a social platform. On the next slide, I will explain how social login can be impl implemented using the OAuth protocol. In this case, we are using the OAuth2 protocol. Imagine there's a user sitting in front of the browser viewing at the login screen. Instead of registering, he would like to use his existing Google account. In that case, the user would hit the Google button on the browser. The browser would call an endpoint implemented on the Acme Warehouse server and this client, Acme Warehouse client, will then return a 302 redirect to the browser and the location will be the social login page, in, uh, specifically the authorization website of the social platform. So the browser will redirect the user to the social platform. The social platform will display its own login page. The user will provide his credentials, username and password. He will sign in and grant the Acme Warehouse client application to access his protected resources. Google will send a HTTP redirect to the browser again the location is the Acme Warehouse client. In OAuth2, this would be the redirect URI that was registered by Acme Warehouse. The response will also include the authorization code. This authorization code is then transported back to the Acme Warehouse client as part of the URL. The client will take this code and will pass it on to the social platform to exchange it for an access token. At this point in time, the Acme Warehouse client is able to access protected resources authorized by the user, but it has got no idea who the user was. To get the username, the client has to call an API on the social platform and has to pass in the access token. The access token is used at the social platform to provide the user information and in this case it is returning an email address that was that is associated with the user who authorized the client web application. The Acme Warehouse client will then use this information as a valid username. The user is logged in. This is called social login. Sometimes social login is used in the same context of single sign-on, but it's not the same. If you look at social login, the main, the main feature is to allow a username or an email address or any other claim which is returned by a social platform to be used on your own website as a valid user credential. This credential is valid on your server and at the social platform itself. Single sign-on would usually mean the user logs into one application and if he chooses to change the location, if he wants to visit a different website, he should be able to log in seamless without the need to provide his credentials again. That would be social login. In this example, if the user would log in to Acme Warehouse, single sign-on would mean 
you may be, be also able to log into a social platform or a business partner or a different website. This is not the case with social login. So now we will come to the Secure Span Gateway. The Secure Span Gateway has a feature called OTK, OAuth Toolkit, which is an OAuth server implementation. This can be used to protect resources via OAuth. Any client that wants to consume these protected resources has to work through the OAuth handshake, has to receive an access token, and has to present this access token at the gateway in order to access these protected resources. But there's a different, or there's another scenario, which would be the gateway becoming a client. If the gateway should consume an OAuth protected resource, this can be implemented using the OAuth client assertion or the OAuth toolkit client. In this case, if you look at this slide, the idea is to hit or to consume protected resources that are hosted on Salesforce, Twitter, or Facebook, or some other platform. Since the gateway provides this feature, I'd like to show you how simple it is to implement an OAuth 2 client. If you look at this page, it shows screenshots or parts of a screenshot taken from the Secure Spend Manager, the tool that is uh, used to create policies. At the upper part, lines 3 to 6, demonstrate uh, only a few lines of, uh, of policy. So if the user would hit the Google button, this Google button would hit an endpoint on the client, and in the case of the gateway, it would be the endpoint that implements those assertions. And what it mainly does is to create the request URL. This is then returned to the client as an HTTP redirect with a status code 302, as we've seen it earlier. The lower part shows more assertions, but in this case, it's even showing two clients, a Facebook client and a Google client. So if you compare or if you go down to line number 11, that assertion distinguishes or finds out that in this case the user wants to use the Google um, login feature. On line 12 we will find the auth client assertion which is the same one as on line 4 of the upper screen. On line 13 the gateway is consuming or calling an OAuth protected endpoint at Google, which is returning the user information we are requiring in this case. And on line 16, a variable is being set, which is called resource owner. So depending on the user, if he uses Facebook or Google, the policy looks almost the same. On this slide, you can see the implementation or the configuration of the auth client assertion. You can see that on the top of the screen there are two tabs. One is called the authorization server, one is the parameters tab. The parameters tab contains the scope and the redirect URI and a state variable. On this first page, the authorization server page, you can see that it's possible to select the brand type to be used. In this case, we've selected authorization code. Available brand types are authorization code, implicit client credentials, and user password credentials. The only additional configuration that has to be done is to set the endpoints, to retrieve user authorization, to exchange the code for an access token, and to set the client credentials. These client credentials are provided by Google in this case. And what you'll have to do is to register a client application and these credentials are being provided. These can then be used here in this assertion and this is all you need to do to implement an OAuth 2 client. In order to implement social login, the gateway now can use both 
features it, provide, it provides. It can act as an OAuth server using the OAuth toolkit and as an OAuth client uh, implemented as the OTKC, the OAuth toolkit client. In this scenario, there's a client that wants to access protected resources, and these resources are protected by the gateway. But the user of this client may want to use the feature of the social login implementation. So in that case, the gateway has to act in both roles at the same time. So as you can see here, the gateway is using the OTK and the OTKC to access protected resources itself. This screen displays the authorization server that is implemented on the gateway. The OAuth toolkit comes with a test client implementation and also with the um, actual OAuth 2 server. And it includes a website which is displayed like the screen shows. So if the user chooses to access resources, this uh, client will redirect him to this page. And above the red line, you can see the part that is implemented within the OAuth toolkit server component. And below the red line, you can see the, uh, the components that implement the OAuth to uh, client. If the user now chooses, for example, to log in via GitHub, you will simply hit this little cat which identifies um, or which represents GitHub. The server will redirect him to GitHub. The server will receive the response, take the access token, request the username, and use this username provided by GitHub as a valid user credential. As a result, on this screen, you can see the subscriber ID, which is, has got the value me at GitHub. Me at GitHub was provided by GitHub. So now the user didn't have to create an account. He didn't have to use his credentials that are stored on the gateway itself. He was able to use the social login feature. To summarize this demo, using the gateway and installing the OTK, the OAuth toolkit, allows the gateway to protect resources via OAuth. The gateway using the OTK client allows the gateway to consume OAuth protected resources. And use cases you can think about are things like implementing Salesforce connectors, social login, auto proxy, Twitter APIs, Salesforce APIs, Facebook APIs, or simply to protect your own enterprise APIs via OAuth. For any more details, please visit us at or contact us at layer 7. Okay. For any more details, contact us via sales at layer 7. Com or visit our website on www.layer7tech.com. Thank you.